What is going on guys, Greggles TV. We have Samsung One UI. We're gonna do another video. This time we're gonna show off advanced features. Now to get there, swipe down from the top, go into settings, and we are going to see advanced features. And this is a pretty big category. It's really where a lot of the customizations, not all of them, but a lot of customizations are for the Galaxy phone. So let's jump right into it. Uh, first of all, we have the S Pen. So the S Pen's obviously a big part of the Note 9, so we won't have this um, if you have just a regular Galaxy phone. So if you want to skip ahead, go ahead. Otherwise, just watch what we have in the Samsung One UI for uh, One UI and the Note 9. Uh, we have the S Pen remote, and in this S Pen remote, this is going to give you some things. If you have this turn on, basically, it's going to give you some things in here. And a lot of the stuff is the same already with what you can get with Android Oreo. But uh, if you hold down the pen button, you can open the camera. You can also take photos. Once the camera is open, you can take a camera a photo by uh, pressing once. And uh, you can also do video that way. Or you can double press and it would switch back to the front or the back camera. And then these other apps as well. I don't honestly use this that much for any of these apps. I kind of forget <laughs> that it's there sometimes, uh, but it's still cool to have. I've, I've used the camera thing a, a few times where you just hold the camera a little bit further away than normal and it allows you to take a photo just by pressing the button that's uh, on the side of the S Pen. Uh, and you can turn that on or off obviously and it tells you how much battery life is with the S Pen as well. And it's take, it charges really quickly. Uh, you can reset your S Pen in here as well. I've done a video on that, but if you're having trouble with your S Pen, you can go into this part right here, the S Pen remote settings, and then hit the three dots in the top right and reset your S Pen. And then basically, all the, uh, just to resync it, just press it back into the bottom of the phone and you're all set. Unlock with the S Pen remote. So you can see if your pen locks, if your phone locks, I should say, when, while you're using your S Pen, just press the pen button to unlock it. This feature only works when your S Pen is connected to your phone. You can use it or not use it. I have it turned on. I don't personally use it that much, if ever, uh, but it, it is a cool way that allows you to unlock your phone with your pen. Screen off memo control, screen off memo, and S Pen signature color settings. So basically when you pop out your S Pen, you'll have a uh, little black screen that you can uh, write on. Uh, just allows you, you can turn that stuff on or off, or write notes while the screen is off, just remove the S Pen and start writing, just like I said. Use S Pen signature color, um, so it allows you to write whatever phone you have, whatever colored note phone you have, uh, it'll give you a different color. Air view, this is gonna preview information, text, and images by hovering your, screen, your S Pen over the screen, so basically, you can hover it right over the screen and it'll pop up an image, stuff like that, if you have that turned on. Direct pen input is to use handwriting pad over the S Pen. Uh, so, I mean, I should say, to use the handwriting pad, hover the S Pen over a text field, then tap the button that appears on the screen. Pointer. Now, pointer is going to be, uh, basically, it shows a pointer when you hover your S Pen over the screen. You'll see a little dot. That's really it. And then you get some shortcuts in here. And this is just gonna be if you want certain apps to pop up when you take out your S Pen. Uh, you can sound an alarm if you walk away with your phone without inserting the S Pen. Kind of a good little security feature if you need it to be. Um, that way you don't lose the pen or the phone. You can use multiple S Pens, use an extra S Pen to write on the screen. Even when an S Pen's already inserted into your phone, this may drain your battery. So if you have two L multiple S Pens, you can turn that on and be able to do something like that. Uh, play sounds when you insert or remove the S Pen or write on the screen. Pretty self-explanatory. Vibration. I don't think you can change the sound yet. Vibration. Vibrate your phone when you insert or remove the S Pen. And then you can just learn about different features of the S Pen. Now this is going to be, the stuff in here is going to be more catered towards uh, uh, people that don't have S Pen. So this hopefully will work with you guys. Accessories. You can turn on and off fast wireless charging. Uh, charging your battery faster, you may hear a fan noise while using the fast wireless charging. If fast wireless charging is off, standard wireless charging will be used instead. So again, you can turn that on or off if you want. They say some people think that fast wireless charging or fast charging ruins your battery. I don't keep my phones long enough to really see any difference, to be honest with you. Smart pop-up view. Uh, select which apps can send you notifications that you can tap to. Expand and pop-up view. This is only available for apps that support multi-window. 
So basically, if you're in multi-window, you'll see a little pop-up and you can go into that and be able to you know, see certain apps. I have Viber turned on and I think my regular text messaging app. I use the Android text messaging app. Then we have Smart Capture. So this one's kind of cool. So it shows additional options for capturing a screenshot with Smart Capture. You can scroll to capture more of the screenshot. So basically what it means is like, for instance, so if I'm on a website, for instance, and I capture a screenshot, there's going to be buttons down here. I can, you know, continue to go down on the web page. I can crop it. I can write on it. Does stuff like that. That's what it's talking about. So if you have that turned on, you're going to be allowed to do certain things like that. Uh, direct share. This is going to show content. Share content with specific people directly from your sharing panel on any app. So if you decide to share something, for instance, if we go back here, we hit these three dots and we go to share. It's going to bring up the share console. Basically, it allows me to share certain things with certain people uh, if I want directly at the top that you'll see their names and stuff like that. Reduced animations is going to tone down motion effects on the screen, such as when apps are opened or closed. So if you have that turned on, your phone's going to feel slightly faster. Uh, we'll go into motions and gestures last, but I just wanted to go through some of these other ones. Game launcher. This is going to organize all your games all in one place and access extra features that enhance your gameplay experience. So if you have that turned on, you're going to have it right here. Game launcher. You open it up. It basically is a one-stop shop to show you all your games and you can look at some more recommended games. You can turn volume off or turn on this to focus on you know better performance or whatever you want for the gaming. Um, you can also, like I said, discover more games. You have your games you played. Um, if you've done videos recorded with this, it'll show you that, which I haven't. Um, but other than that, it'll show you games you played and stuff like that. It's kind of a cool little thing. I don't game that much on my phone, but you know, if you do, you can go in here, go into settings, and you can save mobile data so it doesn't auto auto play certain videos. You can hide games on the home and app screen so they just show up in this launcher. So there's some cool stuff in here that might, you might want to. If you're a big gamer, you probably like this area of settings in there. Uh, Dual Messenger is cool. It uses two mess two separate accounts for the same app. So basically, you can install two versions of Snapchat and each one would have a different account logged into it. Same thing with Facebook, Viber, and Facebook Messenger. You can also use a separate contacts list. And again, it's just if you have multiple um, usernames for certain apps, this allows you to use two apps at the same time. It's pretty of a cool little feature. I generally don't use it, to be honest with you. Video Enhancer, if you have this turned on, it enhances the image quality of your uh, videos and you enjoy brighter and more vivid colors. I turn it on, it's nice to open up YouTube and you get a nice bright video screen with it. You don't have to adjust the settings. Uh, send SOS, this is more of a safety feature. If you turn this on and you press the power key quickly three times, it'll send a quick alert to your emergency contacts when you're in an emergency situation. You can choose the people you send it to, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can attach photos, attach audio recording. You can really get in depth with this, but it's just again, it's just a safety feature. If maybe you're going to get kidnapped, beat up, something like that, it's going to alert uh, somebody that that's going on. Uh, other than that, easy mode. I've talked about this in the past. It just makes your phone like more <laughs> easy, so you don't have to. It's like for older people. I would, I would. That's the way I described it in the past. Um, what else? Let's go back here. Also, navigation bar, if you tap on that, I've talked about this before, but basically it changes these buttons down here. You can either do full screen gestures by swiping up to go back, recent apps or home. Um, you can adjust the button order. Maybe you like your back button on the left and your recent apps on the right. You can do stuff like that. And then lastly, in advanced features, we're going to look at motions and gestures. Uh, I've shown a video on this, how to do lift to wake. Basically, um, it turns on your screen when you pick it up, so your phone will be off. I'll do it real quick. Your phone is off. If you lift it up, the screen automatically turns on. There you go. It turns on for you, even unlocks it. If you have face unlock and it can see your face. Um, you also you have Smart Stay. Smart Stay is pretty cool. Uh, Smart Stay keeps the screen on while you're looking at it by using the front camera to detect your face. So your screen will stay on as long as it can see your face. Smart Alert. This is going to be your phone will vibrate when you pick it up after missing calls or receiving messages. Just in case maybe you're not expecting a message and uh, you wanted to know if you got one, it's a good place to go. 
It'll vibrate your phone. Easy mute. Basically, mute incoming calls and alarms by putting your hand over the screen or turning your face, your phone face down. Again, turn it on or off if you want. Direct call. Direct call is going to uh, basically you pull up the phone to your ear and it'll automatically answer the call for you if you have it turned on. One-handed mode, I don't use this, but you can make the phone basically smaller when it's turned on so you can use it all in one hand. But it, to me, it's like, why'd you get the big screen phone anyway if you can't handle it? Next up, finger uh, uh, sensor gestures. If this is on, um, you can swipe down and might, might be a little difficult for me, but basically it allows you to bring up your notifications and things like that just by using your fingerprint to swipe down on there. Do, do palm swipe to capture. I'm not a big fan of this, but basically you run your palm over like that and it'll capture a screenshot. I don't have a lot of success with it. I just do the uh, power button and volume down to capture a screenshot. And then lastly, we have the swipe to call or send messages. Uh, swipe a contact or a number right to make a call or left to send a message in your phone or contacts, pretty self-explanatory. And that's the breakdown of advanced features built into here. Um, so it's kind of cool, there's a lot of stuff you can go in here and change, and it's pretty easy to get to it, and it's pretty easy to understand it, because if you tap on it like you saw, it's gonna give you information about what it is and what it does. So if you're not sure of a setting or what it does, in Samsung you usually can just tap on it and it'll give you information, or even if you turn it off, like I did right there, it tells you what it does. So there you guys go, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, new videos every single day. I'll see you guys down the road. Peace.